This is a non-invasive current probe for the oscilloscope. It is also called a current clamp. This is also a current clamp, but kind of DIY. In this video, I want to show you how this current clamp probe works, how to use it to observe current values on your oscilloscope and how to make your own. So let's get started. <laughs> What's up my friends, welcome back! There are many types of oscilloscope probes, each with its own field of application. The probe takes care of the very critical coupling between the measure object and the oscilloscope. In this video we will talk about current probes, and to be more specific about non-invasive current probes, which means that we don't have to directly connect it to the open circuit in order to take a measurement. Currents can be measured by measuring the voltage across a no resistance. A major disadvantage about that is that the circuit has to be open to insert the shunt resistor. We've seen this kind of current meter in one of my past tutorials of the Arduino based multimeter. You have the link of that video in the description below. In this video we will do something different, because that additional resistance can also affect the measurement by its burden voltage. Currents can be also measured with a current probe, also known as a current clamp. These probes don't have the disadvantages of the shunt resistor as we have just described. A current probe is simply clamped over the current carrying wire and the circuit doesn't have to be open which is a huge advantage. Ok, so current probes are divided into two types, AC and DC current clamps. I will try to explain how both of these type work. To understand that, let's first take a look at my hand tech current clamp that I've just received. It is quite a useful tool. Probably to measure constant current I would use my multimeter. But in case of an oscillating current value, you will probably need to see the signal on your oscilloscope. For that, I plug the clamp into my oscilloscope. Turn it on and select the scale. In this case, I will have a 10 mV output for each measured 10 mA. Let's first test if it's precise. I set my power supply to a constant voltage and add a load to the output. Now I have a constant current passing through the wire. I connect the probe and observe the value on the oscilloscope. The probe works, I've got the same value as the multimeter tells me and that's perfect. Now let's observe an AC current signal like for example the current of a boost converter. We all know that the boost converter is a switch converter, so there will be current increasing and decreasing. I mount a small boost converter circuit on my breadboard, but without the output capacitor. To switch the MOSFET I will use the Arduino, that will create the switch signal. Now I connect the probe to the output of the coil and add a load to the circuit and observe the current. There you have it, this is an AC current that we can now observe with the oscilloscope. This could be a very useful tool when you are creating your own circuits. Ok, so we have tested the current clamp, then how does it work? For that I will first open the case and observe its components. As I guessed the circuit is quite simple. On the tip we've got the metal magnetic core that will carry the magnetic flux. Here we should also have some kind of a sensor and that's it. Next we have the main circuit, where probably we will find an amplifier and the scale selector circuit, since we have two different scales to choose. Here is the output that goes to the oscilloscope. So knowing these components, let me now explain a little bit how this work. As I said, current probes are divided into two types, AC and DC current clamps. The AC current clamp is basically a transformer. The primary winding is the conductor who carries the current to be measured. 
in this case a simple wire. And the second winding is fixed onto the core and is connected to the oscilloscope. This is a passive probe and can handle only AC currents. A normal transformer can deal with DC currents. Therefore, the operating principle of a DC current probe is rather different from AC probes. Let's first see how to build our own AC current probe. All we need is a transformer core and some copper wire to create our windings. You could buy this kind of module directly winded for a few dollars, just like this. Link is in the description. So, here we have the ferrite core and the main winding. If we place our measured wire through the ferrite core, as we all know, if current passes through a wire, a magnetic field will be created. If the current changes its value, the magnetic flux will also change, and that will induce a current into the core winding. If a current is induced, there will be a voltage drop between the two ends of the winding. We could then measure that voltage drop using our oscilloscope. This module already gives us the scale of the output voltage of 15 amperes per volt. So we should have 100 millivolts for a 1.5 amperes current passing through the wire. I connect this transformer to the oscilloscope and apply an AC signal through the wire. There you go. Here I have my AC current on my oscilloscope. Quite easy, right? If we build our own transformer, we should be careful when calculating the scale, depending on the numbers of windings that we have made, and knowing that the primary winding will be just one, since there is just one wire passing through the core. But if I apply a DC current to this circuit, I will have nothing on my oscilloscope. That's because current is induced into the transformer only on changes of the magnetic flux. So, a constant magnetic field won't induce current into the winding, so the output will be zero. So, how could we measure and observe DC current on our oscilloscope? In this type of probe, we will also use a ferrite core that will carry the magnetic field. The core is provided with an air gap that will hold a sensor, in this case a hole sensor, which measures the magnetic flux inside the core. So now we don't need an AC current anymore, since we could directly measure the magnetic flux value. The current in the primary wire, which is the measured wire, will magnetize the core. This magnetic field is measured with the sensor. All we have to do is to apply a constant current, like for example 1 amp, through the wire and measure the voltage output of the whole sensor placed in between the ferrite core in order to obtain the scale. I've made a few measurements and created this graph. This is the scale between the current passing through the wire and the voltage output of the whole sensor supplied at 5 volts. If the measured current is small in relation with the full range, the sensitivity can be increased by turning the current carrying wire multiple times through the core. The sensitivity is increased in proportion to the number of the times that the wires run through the core. Also keep in mind that by increasing the sensitivity in the manner described reduces the bandwidth. Another way a little bit improved to measure DC current is with a compensation widening but that's a little bit more difficult to mount and calibrate. But its principle goes like this. The primary winding is also the measured current carrying wire and it's inserted through the core opening. There is also a secondary winding, but now it functions as a compensation coil. The core is provided with an air gap that holds the sensor, once again the whole sensor, which will measure the magnetic flux inside the core. The current in the primary wire will magnetize the core. This magnetic field is measured with the sensor and the result of this, the control circuit runs a current through the compensation winding, in a way that the magnetic flux inside the core is kept zero. As a result of this, the core will never be magnetized. The advantage is that the non-linear properties and hysteresis of both core and magnetic sensor have little influence on the measurement results. So now let's build our DC current clamp. 
Using an alligator clamp like this, I will build my own DC current clamp together with a 3D printed case. You could download my design from a link below. I will also use a circular core that I've got from an old power supply that doesn't work anymore. This is a ferrite core. Cut it in half and glue it in place on the tip of the clamp. Be patient while cutting the core because it's quite fragile. Finally, polish the cut and make sure that the core will close ok with the sensor in between. Now I prepare the whole sensor and glue it in place between the gap of the ferrite core. I make sure that the clamp could close with no problems and that the ferrite core is as tight as it can. I connect the sensor to ground, 5 volts and the signal output wires with black, red and blue wires. Connect the output to the oscilloscope to test it out for now. As you can see, if I approach this magnet to the sensor, the output will rise. So just like that, if the magnetic field inside of the ferrite core will increase due to the passing current through the measured wire, I could easily measure the current value. But there is a problem. This magnet creates a very powerful magnetic field, but the current passing through the wire won't. The magnetic field will be very small. So, we will definitely need to amplify the output from the sensor. For that, I've used an operational amplifier with the inverted configuration and a gain of 100. I've used the LM324 op amp, which is quite bad, but sorry for that, it's the only one I've got for now till the new ones will arrive. You could use any other amplifier, but make sure you make the proper connections. In the inverted configuration, the gain is given by these two resistors. In my case, one of 100 kilo ohms and the other one of 1k ohm equal to a gain of 100. I've created this circuit with a small potentiometer in order to calibrate the output. I will also need to supply the circuit, so I will use a 9V battery. Both the amplifier and the whole sensor could withstand that voltage, so no regulator is needed. Now I mount everything on the drill PCB and connect the wires from the whole sensor. To the output, I will connect an oscilloscope probe connector like this with a small filter circuit in between as any probe has. The filter circuit is included in the final schematic. The 3D printed case has holes for a switch and an LED indicator. You could download the final schematic from a link in the description. I place all the components inside of the 3D printed case. Before I close it, I have to calibrate the probe. For that, I apply a current value that I control through the wire. Clamp the probe to it and adjust the potentiometer. For example, I apply a current of 2.8 amps through the main wire. Now I adjust the potentiometer till I have a voltage of 2.8 volts on my oscilloscope. In this way, using a linear sensor, we should have a decent relation between the measured current and the output voltage. Now, after some measured results, I get the scale of the clamp and created the second graph. I know that I've got a scale of 100 and the maximum output of 9 volts, so the probe will saturate at around 9 amps value. To increase the precision, you could always turn the wire multiple times around the core and the precision will increase proportionally. The clamp works. I've got the same value measured with my multimeter as the one on my oscilloscope if I apply the corresponding scale. The good thing about this type of clamp is that you could still observe an AC current with it and that's awesome because the magnetic field is proportional to the current that passes through the wire. That's it! We have seen how to create the AC current clamp with the basic transformer and the DC current clamp with the whole sensor. That's it for today's lesson. This project is just an example and it could always be improved once you know the basics. If you enjoy my videos and want to support me, please check my Patreon page. If you want to buy your own current clamp for your projects, make sure to check the coupon link in the description. 
always check the link in the description for more information. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you have learned something new. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. Thanks again and see you later guys.